So I've got a question for you. What technology are you using in your classroom to help you teach math and to help your students to learn math? G'day, I'm Dr. Peter Price. Welcome to episode seven of this K-6 math vlog. And today the topic is technology. You're probably aware that over the last two weeks I've been using Snapchat to send content to teachers around the world. And I believe, so far as I can tell, there may not be anybody else doing that. Now either that's because it's a really dumb idea and no one's going to take it on or it's because no one's found a way to do it yet. So part of the reason for this vlog is to encourage you to come and have a look and see what the videos are like, see if you like them. And the benefit for you if you hate the idea of Snapchat is you don't have to use Snapchat. You can always use Instagram or YouTube or even Facebook. I'm posting in all those places very similar videos. But what about Snapchat? You can send snaps as they're called, photos, videos or text or a combination of the three to people who are following you, which obviously can be quite a big number if you've got a lot of followers. I've got about a hundred at the moment. And it goes into something called my story and then people using Snapchat can view your story, which can be, it's actually a sequence of everything you post within a 24 hour period. They can watch it as many times as they like. And each snap after the 24 hours, it disappears and it's gone. The person sending me, I can save those to my memories on the app and I can save them and view them later and I can see how many people see them. So what about the technology? This isn't really about Snapchat. This is about what technology do you use when you're teaching math? And are you using cutting edge technology or using old fashioned technology? I have a view that an excellent teacher, even a very good teacher, can teach using nothing more than a piece of knotted string if that's all there was available. You know, you could build a lesson out of a chair and a table or a glass of water or a flag or a sprig of flowers or, you know, it doesn't matter. A good teacher will be able to use that resource and engage the children in discussion and thinking and talking and learning. And you can match that to the curriculum and, you know, in the barest of classrooms. If you were suddenly, you found yourself in an African village with a classroom with dirt floor, bare walls, no windows, and a whole class of kids, you and I would know what to do. We would sit down with the children, we'd find out what they know already, we'd engage them in learning something, we'd find out what their subjects are supposed to be um, teaching them, and we would go for it, because that's what a good teacher does. So it's never about the technology, it's never about do you have an interactive whiteboard in your classroom? Do, you, do your students use iPads? It's irrelevant in a sense. If they do, then let's have a discussion about the best apps that you can use on an iPad or the best uses that you can put an interactive whiteboard to. I think number one is YouTube. There are so many videos on YouTube and you can show little snippets and you show an introduction or a snippet out of the middle or something, you can save them to you know, look at them later. And YouTube is a fantastic resource. I really encourage you, if you're not using it yet, just have a look around YouTube. I'm not talking about my stuff, just, you know, if you want, um, if you want a video of somewhere from overhead, there are that many drones flying around on YouTube. You can get overhead shots of almost anywhere in the world, I reckon. And they're, they're really fascinating. And they're so clear, because they've got fantastic cameras on these things nowadays. And the limits to what you can do with technology um, basically there aren't any, you know, your imagination, your creativity in putting technology to use in order to teach your students um, would be the only limitation. So I guess that's the story today. This is my encouragement to you. Use the technology that you've got. If it's only a chalkboard and chalk, well, use that. But if you've got an interactive whiteboard with a data projector in your classroom, then use it. Use it every day. Use it in as many subjects as you can. Find out what makes it tick. Find out the best ways to get the clearest images with the best colors and the most impactful content and show it to students and let them see that we can learn from other people. We can learn from the world carefully curated. A, a good teacher will be able to use the internet 
on a daily basis, if not even more, you know, if, if not more than once a day, I think, you know, you could easily be using it four or five times a day without any trouble at all. So that's it. I'd love to hear from you. What do you use in your classroom? What technology is available? Do you wish you had something else? Is there something you're hankering after that you'd really like to use with your students? And how do you find it? Do the students respond well? Do they like it more when you use technology? Would they rather use physical materials, especially in the context of teaching and learning math, for example? You know, would they prefer real blocks or are they happy to see videos of blocks or you know, something else on a data projector that's interactive? So that's it for this week. Do give me a thumbs up if you like this video. If this is the first time you've been here, then as always, I encourage you to subscribe. There's a su subscribe button on the screen. There's more subscribe links below the video. Um, and I'd love to have you make contact. Tell me what you're looking for. Tell me how I can best serve you through this YouTube channel or in other ways. And I look forward to communicating with you again next week.